Hello and welcome back. Today I am coming to you with my one month no bite update. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, I suggest you watch my previous video, which I'll try and link in the description where I explained what my no buy challenge is. Basically, I'm trying not to buy much this year, but if you watch that video, I talk all about my rules and exactly what I'm doing. So first of all, I was blown away by your response for that video. Thank you so much. I really didn't expect it to get that many views. I made it just for myself, but it's really excited to see that so many of you are interested in it too, because for me, I think this is something really interesting. So I promised you some updates for the year on how that journey is going but I honestly didn't expect making a video after just one month because I don't want to make videos for the sake of it and I didn't think I would have that much to say after just one month but actually even after just such a small amount of time I have so much to say already and also because in my first video I didn't go too deep into like the philosophy of why I'm doing this so I'm going to share a bit more of that with you today. So first of all let's start with something really simple and that's a change that I'm making to my rules or another thing that I'm going to allow myself to spend money on. So I use an app called Letterbox to keep track of the movies that I watch. Letterbox is kind of like a cross between Goodreads and IMDb and on it I create a list of all the films that I've seen every year and I was looking through my watch list on Letterboxd and there's quite a lot of films that I want to watch that aren't available on Netflix and I've been meaning to watch these films for forever and I actually want to finally get around to watching those films. So I have decided that I'm gonna let myself spend five pounds a month on watching films. And I'm going to try and keep to this really strictly. Um, it's allowed to be a rolling budget, so if I spend £3 on film in one month, I'm allowed to spend £7 on films in the other month. And this means I can buy films that are cheaper and more expensive. So basically I'm allowed to spend £60 this year on films. This is because there are some films that I just haven't watched because they aren't on Netflix, but I do really want to see them and I don't want to not watch them just because they're not on Netflix. I don't currently have Amazon Prime, but I think what I will do is I will see if I can check which of these films are on Amazon Prime, and if three or four of them are on Amazon Prime, I will subscribe to Amazon Prime for one month and try and watch all of those films in one month, and then I'll cancel my subscription at the end of that. Okay, so that's my simple update out of the way, and now let's talk about how I've been finding this challenge. So the first thing is that I have been surprised by how strong my urge to shop is. Um, I think it could be because because of lockdown, I'm at home and I'm with my parents, and so I'm not even doing like Sainsbury shops and things, and quite often I find normally that fulfills my urge <laughs> to go shopping, but because I'm not even doing that, there's just a nagging voice in the back of my head that wants to do some shopping. Um, just little things, I keep coming across things on the internet, I'm like, oh, let's buy that, let's buy that, and I have to be like, no, let's not, but I've been really surprised by how strong that, like, urges, and how, um, it's really hard to train myself to not want to shop, which is kind of why I'm doing this challenge, I want to turn off that voice in my head that looks at the internet and goes, what can we buy today? I don't want my default to be, what can we buy today? I want to only buy things when I actually need them. I was watching one of Chinzia's videos the other day and she said that this voice in her head lasted for like a month or so, so I'm hoping this will go away. I think this is one of those things where I just need to be strong and not give in to the urge to shop and hopefully it will eventually go away. <laughs> so I didn't talk about this too much in my first video, but the philosophy behind why I'm doing this is all to do with minimalism. I've been really interested in minimalism for like the last five years or so and I've done a very good job of decluttering how much stuff I own in my life. I actually don't own that much stuff and I think I'm quite in control of how much stuff I own but giving up shopping is like the second half of that I feel and that's something that I just haven't really dealt with in the past five years. Um, I'm very good at decluttering what I own but I'm not very good at stopping things from coming into my house in the first place. And so that's kind of why I'm doing this. If you watched last week's video I talked about why you should spend your money on experiences instead of material purchases and I really want to think that way and I really want to start saving my money so that I can be able to afford to go on more trips and go and see more concerts and things in the year without feeling really guilty about it. And then the last thing that I wanted to talk about is clothes and I came home for Christmas and I'm now stuck here because of the lockdown um, but I had no clue how I was going how long I was going to be home for I knew there was a good possibility of lockdown but also in my original plan I was going to come home for a bit and then I was going to go to my dad's house for a bit because I have divorced parents and then I was going to go to my boyfriend's for a bit so because I had no clue really what my plans were I decided to pack really light so that if I had to get a train I could. Because I was doing this I decided it would be a great opportunity to experiment having a capsule wardrobe so I only brought home about a week's worth of clothes and actually I am loving it. Um, I'm really enjoying having a limited wardrobe, especially where I intentionally planned it so that most of the clothes go together. I can wear basically any top with any bottom and they, you know, all go well together. And I'm really loving it. I'm really loving how easy it is to get dressed in the morning. And also I think Ashley from Best Dress, when she did her 
capsule wardrobe experiment she was talking about how it felt kind of like a uniform and I really feel that and I really like it um I feel like I have a strong sense of style at the moment because I feel like all of the clothes I brought home have kind of a style to them um and I'm really loving just wearing <laughs> these like 10 pieces of clothing over and over again um and being able to mix and match them in different ways and so I'm actually pretty happy with my winter wardrobe. It's probably not my dream wardrobe. If I could go and build a wardrobe from scratch, I'd probably pick some cooler pieces, but in the interest of sustainability, I'm trying not to do that. Um, I'm trying to just use what I already have, but actually I have a pretty good winter wardrobe. There are maybe one or two more items I would love to have. Um, for example, I didn't bring my dungarees home and I think they would fit really well into this wardrobe. It is a tiny bit too small maybe for long term, but I literally think one or two more items and this capsule wardrobe would be great long term. I have always loved autumn winter fashion more than spring summer fashion, so I've always leaned towards my favourite clothes being in my autumn winter wardrobe, but what this has made me realise is that I would love to have um, a similar capsule wardrobe for the summer and I just don't have that at the moment. So basically, this is me saying that I'm probably gonna buy some summer clothes this year. Um, I'm gonna try and be very mindful to only buy a few things and a few things that I need. I will go through my wardrobe and see what I have and pull out the items I have and then see what's missing from that. But I just thought I'd share with you that I've already been thinking about the fact that I probably will buy myself some summer clothes this year because I would love to reach a point where I feel like I have a really consistent, really lovely summer wardrobe that I'm excited to wear. So I'm saying this because I want to highlight again the fact that this challenge is not me trying to spend as little money as possible, it's about me trying to spend my money as intentionally as possible. So we will address that challenge when it comes, I'm sure I'll film a summer haul for you. But yeah, I just wanted to share with you that I've been thinking about that and please don't hold it against me when in summer I do do a summer haul because I think that's going to happen. Um, but yeah, I think those are all of the updates that I wanted to give you today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, let me know in the comments if there's any videos that you want to see related to this challenge or related to like money and happiness. Um, I would love to make them. I And I would really recommend checking out the channel Personal Philosophy Project by Chinzia. She makes videos all about money, but they're not really about money. It's about like where to spend your money um, and how to save money, etc. Really accessible videos. If you are interested in how to spend your money um, more intentionally, but finances sound really awful to you, which is basically me, um, then her channel is wonderful. <laughs> Thank you for watching. My name is Louise and you can find me on Instagram and YouTube at Louise's Life.